So, after a long-awaited fixes on all sorts of computer stuff and life and fortification update, I'm back. At least for a little while. So, biggest thing of interest that has happened lately, well, not the biggest thing, but up until yesterday was the biggest thing that happened was that big old fortification patch that just came out and I'm a base builder so I naturally need to test it out this past week is the first time where I've gotten the chance to do that and as a result I have thoughts good thoughts though they're mostly good and also in the build up to testing out for myself I looked at Sirius's and Kami's videos so yeah I'm gonna have some feedback on that and then a debrief of what happened over the past three days as I built bases tried it all out I put a lot of thoughts, well, I, I had three videos that came out of the past three days. My first impression, which was here, and it was it was basically looking at the modules, putting them down in a non-combat zone sort of thing. Excuse me. And it none, nothing was unlocked. It was just basic base builder stuff. And then... I had a second impression, which was which was putting things down after unlocking them. Kind of get to see some of the new modules and stuff. Going through it all, testing out what's compatible with what. And then the third one was the frontline base, which happened a couple building. days ago. And that... That was building the enemy territory. This was on Connery a couple days ago, and I built. Let's see if I can find myself. I built in the VS territory side of ISA. So I was smack dab in the middle of the map, couldn't miss me. Built a big old base and just started kind of going at it. Yeah, so I'm going to debrief all that first. What happened as I and I'm gonna go through the patch as that patch updates to kind of give my impression of how this thing actually played in real life. Then I'll go into Sirius's second video, the one where he said he had the greatest fight of his life, largely due to the fortification base building, and then Kami's video, which took a little bit more of a critical approach to the uh, fortification. And I won't go through Sirius's first fortification video, which was on the test server. Basically, my first impression video. Okay. So let's go with the patch. The patch came out on May 17th, which was a little under two weeks ago. And fortification was one part of multiple parts of that update. It was a celebration of 20 years of plant side. Official soundtrack became available, double experience event, and it was also a celebration of the 20 year legacy, which had different directives and, and all sorts of stuff. You could get the Helios, which due to life circumstances, I wasn't able to do. And a legacy bundle. But then comes the big stuff, the construction overhaul. And for me, I am a main battle tank driver, so Vanguard. I also, I, could, I guess I could say I main Colossus at this point, having done 20 plus videos on it and 40 plus polls and two days in, in the vehicle worth of uh, time. And then I also kind of back up main max whenever I can, but it's a little bit difficult because you can't chain pull. Especially now that the, they removed the revive, which hats off to them. I I can appreciate that. 
But in any case, and then construction came out, and I immediately took to it. I love construction, big fan. So this construction overhaul of great interest to me. What I thought was a replacement of the system actually was in addition to the system. Uh, it says major rework, which is true. It is it is rework, but not major as in they, they're replacing all sorts of stuff. You now have to do things completely different. It is different, but not completely. It is rework, but not completely. And you'll see what I mean. So the goal here was to make construction more accessible, more fun to fight at, and allow for more diverse base building. Number three, they definitely, most definitely, in spades, accomplish that. So that's off to RPG. More accessible? Um, sort of. Sort of. The, not, not entirely, no. A lot of the stuff, as I came to find out, like in my first impressions video here a lot of it was locked so there's no bundle that i could see it's all locked behind uh, either certs or daybreak cra daybreak cash so you can spend certs to you can spend certs to to get unlock all the new construction objects of which there are many by the way they did rework like the way the bunker looks as you can see here but ultimately uh more accessible kind of because if you have cert you can unlock everything it's not behind a daybreak cash paywall that sort of stuff there's no easy button necessarily so as you can see here i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to buy it but I'm trying to buy it here, but uh, ultimately I decide not to for my first impression just to kind of put down what is what. A lot, a lot of the modules are, are unlocked right away. Well, some of the modules are unlocked right away. So I would say accomplished, accessible. It is accessible. Here you can't buy the silo reserve, the command center, the rebirthing, some of the big stuff. You have to either spend you know 500 search for... The reserve, 2,000 search for command center, or half of that for the daybreak crash. More fun to fight at. TBD? It's looking up though, and I'll tell you why. Many new construction objects have been added. Oh yeah, so many new stuff. Some have been given a facelift. Yep. And more cover and interior spaces are now available to fight around. Oh my gosh, is there so much more cover now to hide behind and, and kind of defend yourself against, or at least survive. And that comes at a cost. Spoiler alert, comes at a cost of the AI system, which was a big defensive tool for construction players. Uh, and I just have to disagree big time on Kami as to that being a, a really good thing. But we'll see, time will tell. So learning construction, there's a new one-time tutorial mission. That's what I was doing here in the beginning. Let's complete that quest. Super easy. Pull an ant, pull, uh, mine some corneum, put down a silo, and then you get like a tree stand and stuff. So pretty cool. Mm, what else? Additional construction-based daily missions have been added to the pool for all players. Awesome. That's cool. I'll be doing those, I'm sure. VR training now has Cordium spawn and facility silos. I didn't know that one. I'm going to have to go. I've been asking for that for a long time. So that's awesome. Now we can practice with construction objects in the VR training room. I'm going to check that out big time. So UI updates. Remove the two-click process of placing a construction item. Cool. Big fan. And you can now select either currency with a single click. Uh, not as cool as I thought it would be. You kind of had this problem even before fortification. Where's a good picture? There, right there. So you see how on the left you have the, the cert unlock on the right. You have daybreak cash unlock. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... 
that is Cordium unlock. Well, because it's only one single click now, if it's too easy for me to click on the certification after I've already unlocked it. Like right now you can see the bunker here. It's already unlocked. So I don't need to unlock it again with certs. But when I'm clicking about, especially when I'm in a high stress situation trying to build a base, I already clicked certification twice when I shouldn't have. I didn't need to. I had full cordium. So I would have, I think I would have liked, I would like my recommendation number one is create that two-step process, that confirmation for the certification, the cert buy, not the cordium buy. The cordium buy, I think most base builders are are going to go for that one. So first one is two-step confirmation for certification unlock one step click for cordium to call it unlock yeah all right ui updates removed the two click process of placing a construction object now you can select either or just one over that the new favorites functionality is awesome I'm a big fan of the favorites functionality. Trying to sift through all of these terminal categories here is um, tedious, but you know, for, for what it does, I think it's great. Having a favorites is even better. I think I mentioned that in an in article when I used to write articles for Planetside 2 back in the day. I've written, uh, I think over 40 at this point. I think one of them was a favorites, but it was for the loadout. The fact that you inputted that for construction is grade A. I think Kami recommended that that be implemented planet side wide across loadouts and everything else. I also hardly endorse that. By unlocking equip buttons and terminology have all been adjusted to make more sense. Cool. Exiting the building terminal window will retain your last selection. Thank you. Thank you. That is just by default. Uh, I hope that that works for the rest of everything because whenever I jump out of like, say engineer or max, whenever I go back, it doesn't retain my last selection. So sometimes I've been guilty of moving too fast with like squad taxes and stuff, not paying attention and it reverts to my default versus whatever one I picked last or that I've been using for the past four hours. You know, like my my mine hunter loadout or my close quarters loadout or my long range loadout. Okay. Placing construction controls for placing construction objects are now visible. When construction object is held, what they're talking about are those arrows. It's really hard to see it here. Let's find one that it's easier to see. The arrows are beginning of something great for construction players, in my opinion. You can see it right now. These little red things right here. Those red things are... I've been wanting that forever and ever. And the fact that you inputted them makes construction a lot easier. Because now, there's, so there's a red arrow that tells you to point down. Which means, if you go any higher than this, it will not allow you to place it. But then, below that is a blue arrow. A blue up arrow. You can see right there in the middle. That says, you have to be above this to place. So, what you're trying to do is get in a range between those two arrows. Dude. That unlocks a lot of speed building and precision building. <laughs> What's up, Lex? Thanks, man. So I'm, I'm there now over the fortification. I know you hate it, but. And then at the end, I'm going to go over Kami's video and uh, Sirius's video. I'm going to do a react kind of like you did to Sirius the other day. In any case. So. Oh, you don't hate it? Tell me more. 
because I heard your thoughts on it, and I remember you saying it was like a massive waste of time. Oh, okay, now yeah, that checks. A uh, massive waste of time, and you thought that they shouldn't have focused on it at all. Makes sense. I get it. Okay. So those arrows is what they're talking about here. Controls. Uh, the control arrows are awesome. The only thing I would recommend have a left and right control arrow because the biggest part, the biggest problem for a base builder, is when you're about ten modules in, ten construction objects in, and you're trying to fit stuff especially that stupid vehicle terminal which is huge and very tedious and it, you have to get it just right otherwise it won't turn green so if you have like a left and right arrow that helps me and it's reactive to what the the placement is i can put that thing down in five seconds be done with it whereas you know right now it takes up, upwards of 30 seconds to try and find a spot and since the rotation has been slowed, it takes me even longer now to find it because whereas before I could just hit auto rotate and it would just spin around really fast and I would catch a green if it hits. Now I have to wait for it to slowly rotate, slowly rotate. So it takes it probably would take me now 45 to a minute long now to, to find a green location for something like a vehicle terminal. Yeah, anyways. Uh, so let's put that one down. Uh, left, right arrow for green. For turning green. Yep. Construction placement spheres have been replaced with di directional arrows. Oh, we already went over that with the controls. I'm not really sure what they mean by that now. Reduce default rotation speed. I'm not entirely sure that was a good thing. I think you should put it back to what it was because the control function already slowed it down. Now the control function makes it to like a small little crawl. Small little crawls weren't the problem. It was when you're 10 modules in and 10 construction objects in, where can I fit stuff? And when I'm getting, when I'm under fire, Especially now that the skywall shields are so reduced to like these little itty bitty umbrellas. Now they can rocket pod me from anywhere. I have to build even faster now because of that. So slowing down the rotation speed doesn't help me. It actually kind of hurts me when I have built up bases. So revert rotation speed back to fast control was already slow yeah sealed up holes beneath certain construction objects which would allow you to get inside the back face of the modules okay maintaining construction passive cordium drain has been removed thank you thank you thank you that was a pain in the ass especially when you have like all the modules down and like you had to go restock every five minutes or else your base would start destroying itself because there's just too much of a draw this change allows for builders to set up bases far in advance of a fight that may or may not make its way down the lattice. Yeah, but also it allows me to build up bases to the maximum extent and not be worried about constant, 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 constant restocking. Which kind of doesn't matter anymore because of the, the module that upticks your cordium by 10,000 and your cordium reserve, which is of and of itself I think is 25,000. You can easily net over 100 grand. 75, 100 grand of cordium, which is just phenomenal. Instead of doing cordium runs for a fight that may never manifest. Yeah, agreed. But I'm more interested in how I can use that on the front lines. Anyways, yeah, especially now since the, the router spires are gone and you can't do global reach with them anymore. There's not really much of an incentive to be far back behind enemy lines, except if you want to do like infinite air pulls, which is very niche nowadays. And if you want to do vehicle pulls and for infinite, it's just not, they're too far away. They might as well just remote pull to the bases closest. Nah. We've moved toward a more active form of cordium drain. What does that mean? The flail glaive will drain cordium when firing. 
Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Modules are equipped and placed into structures when the need arises and vehicle air pads still drain cordium as vehicles are used. Does that mean that modules drain? It says we'll talk about that later. Okay, fine. We'll talk about that later. Ah. Okay. This is a nerd's strat side for construction players. I will probably make... Uh, I will still do the... What's it called? The React videos, but I'll probably make it a different VOD. So, don't, don't be afraid to miss out. You'll be fine. Interaction with construction. Silos with now 500 meters now appear on your map and minimap. Cool, thank you. Spotlights attached to construction objects now count as dark lights. Yes! Yes! All right, thank you. That explains the other day when I was in my, where was it? My frontline base and somewhere in here, I spotted an enemy TR or VS and fell and I was like, hmm, I can see you just like a dark light. It didn't connect that the flashlights above were dark lights. Thank you. I like to think that my, my insanely popular Reddit post of making dark light flashlights from the infantry towers contributed to that. I'll just go with that, whether it's really reality or not. But that is cool. That is a quality of life thing that I wholly appreciate. Because now I have a fighting chance against all of these infills that I got assaulted at a couple days ago in ISA. Here, you can see the video playing. Oh, man. That's awesome. Spawn locations at construction bases now show the name of the player who owns the object. Cool. Good. Quality of life. Thank you. Additionally, there are new ways to interact with construction through outpost modules and attack modules. What does that mean? I'm going to have to write that down so I can go check that out. There are new ways to interact with construction throughout through construction outposts, modules, and attack modules. I don't know what that means. I didn't that wasn't intuitive for me when I was putting everything down. Alright. Construction outposts. Oh. They're gonna explain it to me. Previously open field vehicle capture points. Ah, okay. Like um Uh, void well, maybe? Let's go to void well. Let's go to the map. So you're talking about, was it Burgess Overwatch, right? Where did that little guy go? It was right next to Regent Rock. There it is. So Burgess. I think you're talking about Burgess Overlook, right? Have been updated with a new construction outpost silo. I did see that uh, at the beginning of, I think it was... I don't even know if I recorded it, but my fob, my front line, right? Oh, I, I don't think I recorded it. It was after all that was done. Uh, before this point here, I found, I think, a construction outpost and I was able to just build. It had a huge amount of accordion. That's probably what they're talking about. This silo is accessible to factions who own the region and is accessible to any player on that faction. Cool. These outpost sil silos regenerate Cordium. Sweet. Over time, ensuring that construction assets are readily available to deal with, but not all of them. I noticed that when I was interacting with that construction outpost, there was a lot of stuff I couldn't build. I don't, I couldn't build a, I don't think I could build a router. I could not build a command thing, the, the new big stuff with the vehicle pad, the, the all like three in one sort of stuff. The command out, the command something. I couldn't build that one. There was a lot I couldn't build. Couldn't build a flow or a glaive or orbital. Players who previously owned these objects have their placement limits freed up so that they can build elsewhere. Elsewhere? Interesting. I thought I remember when I put one of them, one of the modules down at a one out of one that it told me to try, that I need to replace it whenever I try to build it here, where you see now that I'm building next to ISA. Oh, what is that? Command Center. But I'm not so sure about that. I'll have to check that out. That's another thing I'm going to need to check out. 
So for construction outposts, check to see if players who previously owned these objects have their placement limits freed. When an outpost is captured by an opposing faction, construction objects within 100 meters are converted to the capturing faction's control. Awesome, man. That's some cool PvE right there. All right, cool. Let's go to modules. By the way, I didn't know this. Modules are the little things in your hands now that you put on, on uh, objects. Objects are like the command center, the orbital, the flail, walls, all that stuff. Modules have been converted into handheld objects. They actually look pretty cool. I like the aesthetics of it. They can be slotted into new sockets. Okay. Modules come in a variety of types, allowing for base customization based on needs. Certain modules can only be equipped on specific construction objects in the list of compatible modules shown in the terminal screen. When you're at a construction base, empty module sockets appear on the HUD. When you, while you're holding a module, the HUD will show compatible and incompatible module sockets. Man, I probably should have read the, this for for uh, to digest it. I read it. I glossed over it in the beginning with uh, Zealous's video when uh, he had he interviewed us. I didn't quite see that right away, the compatible and incompatible modules. So my first impression here was just confusing. I could not figure out. I, I, I spent a good five minutes trying to figure out what was compatible with what, when all I had to do was just look at the, where is it? Uh, look at the, should be right here somewhere. Compatib there it is. Compatible buildings up at the top right. Lesson learned. Modules are socketed into empty slots or can be swapped out. There's a bug there that doesn't let you swap all of them out with an existing module. Modules and their effects cannot be stacked, meaning that only one module at a given type can be slotted into the construction object at a time. Okay, I learned that out. I learned that from my first impression video here too. Attackers can overload a module, much like a generator, by interacting with it. When the timer completes, the module detonates. Wait, what? Attackers can overload a module, much like a generator, by interacting with it. When the timer completes, the module detonates and deals some structural damage. Okay. They're actually pretty easy to un-overload, de-overload. It wasn't overly difficult, but when I wasn't paying attention in the heat of the battle during my fob one here, especially toward the end, I frequently found modules that were destroyed that I didn't notice. So infills were able to go in and um, destroy a lot of modules, which left me running back and forth to put to replace them. First world problems. Attackers can overload a module, much like a generator, by interacting with it. When the timer completes, the module detonates and deal. Wait, I just said that. Similarly, accordion bombs and tunnel worms. All oh, right. That was the stuff in the tactical slot on everybody else's loadout, like LA infill. Can be equipped in the tactical slot by attackers. Okay. When placed into an empty socket, they'll either count down and until major damage for recording bomb or preventive structure from repairing a tunnel worm. All I saw were recording bombs. I didn't see any tunnel worms that I know of. I didn't take any out, at least, I don't think. And now let's get into the modules. There are a lot of modules. I'm actually really happy and impressed with the, the module diversity. Repair modules. Repairs of building over time increase the max health by 5,000. I did, I put this in my second here. I think I calculated that if you were to put all of them, all of the health increases, you could up your your structure health by about 25, 27,000 hit points. That is a boatload of max health. But uh, even the command center only has four. 
So I think the max I calculate you could do is 17,000. Still, that is a ton of extra health. Put a repair module on, increases the max health by 5,000. Projectile shield, which just uh, it shields the, the windows and doors from projectiles hitting it, but you can still walk through it. Increases the health by 2,000. Skywall shield, which is just like the old skywall the old skywall module protecting from airborne attacks no longer emps infantry oh when you jump through it it used to emp you take your shields away the shield is one way so i can shoot out of it but not into it however what's not mentioned here is that the skywall shield radius has been greatly reduced before it was like a big old tarp you could fit most stuff underneath it now it's a little tiny umbrella and that uh, that means that it is much less useful. And I found that out while doing my my fob here. Let's see if I can find a video of it. Oh, wait, I think right. That's when I was building the bridge. So a little bit sooner than that. I don't think I put it on right away because it just wasn't. Oh, there we go. It just wasn't all that useful. So as you can see there. It's really only like, I don't know, 25 meters wide, maybe. It wasn't very big that I put that on the orbital, which seemed to be the right thing to do. But. I'm out, but. Uh, but it do, it's not entirely useful because what I noticed in my base building second impression when I did it it was all offset so it's now fixed uh you can't you can't put the module like in a depression and then it covers the majority of your base without allowing a lot of people to get in underneath it but now it's no longer like that now it's fixed oh you can see it right there was I on the bridge there for a second where's the bridge At the end, I'm on the bridge. Here we go right there. So as you can see, there is a huge gap between these two right here. Draw. There's a huge gap in between these two. That did not work. Let's make it yellow. There we go. There's a huge gap in between those two right there. And because it's not that big, it's really only here. That means that anything from here, here, all of this can be hit. All the red lane can be hit by a, uh, a to G. All of that. So you're really only protecting this and this and only from the ground. Uh, only from directly above. So really it's against liberators. A to G now with low flying ASFs, they're just gonna they're gonna tear right through this. It's not even gonna be a contest. So that's why I don't think they're all that useful anymore. Yeah, they're not all that useful anymore. But they are helpful against flails, glaives, and orbitals. Uh, but now that's very niche, in my opinion. Very, very niche. So, Skywall Shield has been greatly reduced in effectiveness. Firewall Module prevents modules and the structure from being overloaded. I only found this to be very helpful in the, the higher module slots like the command center. Uh, when I put it on the second floor, it's, it was much harder to get to that point. Uh, notice first that someone tried to overload one of my modules and then get to it. This just adds, you know, time for me to notice and it increases the health by another five grand, which is a boatload of hit points. So 
Yeah. Equipment terminal module. Provide a structure with unhackable equipment terminal. That was really cool. I did it in here, The my first impression. I put it down here on my... my my equipment, my silo, I mean. It's really good in a pinch, but there's so many different construction objects like rebirthing center and other stuff that give you equipment modules that you don't even need it anymore. Anyways, it's there. Durability module. I use this a ton. This is on my favorite section. Increase your max health by 8,000. So, very... Big time worth it, especially on walls. Capacity module increases your maximum cordium held by an object by 5,000. You can only equip this on the silo. You can't equip it on the on the reserve. It's it was helpful in the beginning by myself, but as as I noted in the the front line one, there were so many people that were helping me, I didn't need it. So I replaced it. High pressure modules, which means temporary. I come, I've come, i come to learn. Heavy repair module. It re repairs it rapidly over time. 2% a second. Whereas the, the repair module is 0.5. So this one is forever. But this one is only 60 seconds. This was very helpful for me in a pinch. I, I use a lot of heavy repair modules. Fortress shield, I didn't use as much. I thought it would be really helpful. I did it a couple times in my second impression, but ultimately uh, it didn't really help me as much because I didn't have time to do it. If I had multiple base builders, then it probably would have been more helpful when I was under attack. Heat dispersion, I wanted this to be helpful, but because it only lasts for one minute, it wasn't all that super useful. But it did humongous, it, in a big way, it reduced heat accumulation for when you fire your weapon. Uh, it's, what I'm talking about is uh, the AV, AA, and AI mod, AI turrets. It, it almost increased its uh, heat retention by double. I think even triple, but I didn't time it. It only lasts for 60 seconds though, so it's only somewhat helpful. And excuse me, and when you have so many construction objects down, you're not worried about heat dispersion at that point. Accordion bomb has been reworked into a bomb that players can slot into a module. So that was the, the tactical slot thing that I talked about. And it caused incredible damage. I don't know how much. I'm not really sure. I didn't see it in action. Tunnel worm. I was able to uh, to deactivate them before I think most of them went off. Tunnel Worm. Regenerating health. I don't see this as too helpful because so many of the walls and stuff, I just put a durability module on and 8,000 health. And that, that can take a while to eat through. Remove the modules. Turret AI. Sad face. That was a big thing for construction players. When I was by myself, not too many people wanted to help me with construction. So turret AI module was really one of the only ways that I survived by myself. It was sad, but I survived through the AI turret, turret AI module. So that's gone. I think with the new AI module, though, with the handheld stuff, that this should make a return. I think it would be helpful for that to be back. They weren't all that spectacular anyways so for the people who are complaining the only one you really had to worry about was the ai the ai was a pretty <laughs> pretty spot on module it it was good oh here i am i'm putting it in right now you can see so it, it takes a long time for the heat to accumulate down there in the bottom middle um so i think this should make a return only because with the new AI module system, it's much more of a give and take than it used to be. Whereas before, I just put everything down, made sure they overlapped. Here, I have to pick and choose. And with the durability module and the, some of these other things and the repair module, 
you really base builders are now faced with a choice of trade-off just like you do with the implants just like you do with picking your weapon it, it's a pretty significant choice too AI module has replaced recon array structure. I didn't quite figure this one out. I'm going to have to read this one to figure it out. But I tried using it multiple times. I'm not really sure what it did for me. Recon module combined with the alarm module into the recon array structure. Oh, right. The recon array structure. Again, I'm not really sure what that was all about. New construction objects. The command center. So... The stuff that I saw them do was they they created a lot of big ticket stuff, kind of like a one size fits all, especially at command center. It has a it has a air vehicle pad, it has a spawn room, and it has equipment terminal, and it has a ground pad. That's that's a lot. Like that combines so many things into one, but it's so big. So you have to kind of put it out a little ways. Recon array alerts the owner to the presence of nearby enemies, similar to alarm module. I did see some things, although they must have tweaked the notification because it wasn't quite as noticeable to me when someone got in range. And passively checks for enemies nearby, similar to a recon device. It can be activated manually to provide detailed motion sensing for a duration. Okay, this did not help me that much. I wanted it to... I thought I tagged it, or I enabled it, when there were people nearby and I couldn't see anybody. So maybe they were cloaked. I don't know. Bulwark walls. This was the biggest surprise to me because I didn't think we were lacking in any sort of diversity of walls, but I didn't know what I was missing out on. When they came out with these bulwark walls, the thin and wide variant, instantly value added. Because of the way it goes up and over, it provides a level of protection for things that go over, like grenades, or thumper, or A to G even. So I use, I really like the bulwark walls. I, I'm, they're my go-to now. Module dispenser. This was situationally helpful, especially out further where I was trying to build like the bridge and everything here in the front line. When I was trying to build the bridge way out yonder, I put a module dispenser out closer to it so I could then restock it easily. And because there's no cordium drain anymore, it was actually pretty helpful. Infantry tunnel. Could not find a use for this. I don't know what this is used for. I suspect on Osher, but I don't know. I don't know. I didn't... It was so big and clunky that I couldn't fit it anywhere. So, I'm not sure. I'll have to keep on doing stuff. The tree stand. This is one of my low-key favorites. The tree stand is so lightweight and thin that I could put it anywhere I wanted, walk underneath it, walk around it. It didn't get in my way. Like some of the other things like the command center, which is just huge and bulky. I really like the tree stand. Big fan. Infantry awning. It's This is only sort of helpful. It's kind of like a light version of bulwark walls. And I'm not entirely sure that it was more helpful to me than the bulwark. I don't know the hit point difference between them, but I'm, I suspect that it's not as, it's not bigger than the bulwark walls. But the infantry awning I put next to my silo, and it, I guess it helped me out one time when I was getting shelled by like a by a lightning that was running rampant in the base. But I don't know, I don't know. I think bulwark walls did the job. Secure silo. So store, it stores additional cordium. I liked that. That was cool. That right there. You see it there two seconds ago. Where'd it go? Right there. Center screen. That right there is a secure silo. I like it. It's pretty cool. It's, um, it's very helpful for when random people come to help you out and put stuff in your base. They can easily use that instead of your main silo. So I liked it. Big, big, big fan. Rebirthing center seemed rather redundant to me. It seemed like the command center did everything I needed to do. It was pretty centrally located. So what I ended up doing was put my command center at the far end of one side of my silo radius and then rebirthing center on the other. And I have now two 
spawn points. In addition to my, my, what was it called? Dang it. The little spawn thing. Not the router, the other one. I'm, I'm blanking on it. But the, but the, the construction object that allows you to Elysium spawn tube. I can put that next to my base. So my Elysium. Then a rebirthing on one side. Then a command center on the other. And a router. So now I have one, two, three, four. And then a Sunderer. Five. Five spawn points just by myself that I can put down. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. And turned out I needed some of them in this later fight here. Toward the end when I was trying to fortify stuff while under attack all the time. Light post. Okay, let's talk about the AI module for a second because you can see that dude. That right there, that's a dude shooting, right? So I thought that having no AI module was going to be a big, big negative. Like it was going to just kill base building. That didn't happen. And then what, what happened instead was I built in the middle of the map in enemy territory. So you can uh, near Cerro listening post. Let's see if I can catch a map photo here here it is right there so i'm in isa right isa is where's is isa isa is right here i am right here okay so i am well within air and enemy territory and i'm building a big old base I did that intentionally because I wanted to draw the fight to me. Turns out the fight didn't really draw to me too much. There was another enemy base, or enemy. There was another friendly base right there that drew the most attention off me. So I'm pretty sure that that's the reason why I survived so long. And I survived till the end of the alert, by the way. But anyways, Big X was me. So I was building in enemy territory, trying to build as fast as I can. I... And as that was happening, people just started coming to help me. And that was interesting to me. I had never seen that before. Usually in pre-fortification, construction was a solo job unless you had dedicated friends who wanted to help you. But now with the, I don't know if it's the, the, the lack of the AI modules or the addition of the... What's this thing called? The secure silo. But now there were there were multiple ants coming up to restock me. There were multiple people running around my base to to jump in a turret. They did stuff in my base, and I, and that's new. That's very new. Usually, I'm I'm used to people just spying in the least of spawn tube and then running away, but now they stayed. And, and probably because there was more for them to take part in. To include this big old command center. They could hold up there. Or they could go left. Right there. Left. Where the infantry tower is. Here. And, and there was like a whole line of defense that I created. Like right there. Whole line of defense. So they, they could take part fighting there when the fighting got tough. There, more people stayed, and that was really cool. I didn't expect that. So, yep. Vehicle bridge. I, that one was just for, for giggles. I kind of, I, I put it down just because I really wanted to. I, I didn't really find too much use for it. In, in, on Asimir, in the middle of the map, near Isa. Light post. I thought that was hilarious, that thing. But now that I realize that they are all inherently dark light, much more useful now. I'm going to put it near a, a silo or my orbital and just kind of face it toward the, uh, the entry point. Yeah, sure. There's only one of one, though, which is pretty funny, too. To detect infiltrators. Yeah. Blast gate. I am probably one of the most, I'd say, pound for pound quality of life improvements for... The old blast gate was huge. It was clunky. It had two entries on the other side of it. But because of the railings on the outer edges, it was so 
it was not very helpful as a blast wall. It didn't really fit in between stuff. Whereas new blast gate, super helpful. There's a blast gate and a blast wall. So the blast gate is actually a blast gate. So you can't just shoot through the middle and then hit the inside of a base. It has like a kind of staggered weave. It's really cool. I like it a lot. It's probably one of my favorite pound for pound improvements on fortification. Blast wall is actually just a skinny wall you can fit in between gaps. I, it actually does what I, I and think of when, when I want to do a blast wall. Mining drill, probably the most unique, innovative thing, in my opinion, is you can craft this as a war asset and then call it down to the center of your base and it will just generate cordium crystals. So it takes 10 minutes to build. It takes a little bit of resources, but once you put it down, if you're under fire and you can't get out of your base, mining drill. And it takes just enough effort and, and resources to build that it's challenging. So it's not like a gimme or an easy button mode. It, it was actually kind of hard. And I think I put that one in my first impression or my second impression. Yeah, it was, a, it was a second impression. There it is. Going, just kind of plug it away, and you can see the cordium crystals that are going, cordium crystals that are that are generating right next to it. I don't know what use the crystals defensively means. Means? I'm not really sure. Reworks and renewals. Many of the one-way shields have been converted to two-way shields. Sad face. Exceptions include the Skywall shield, Shields that are specifically meant to allow spawning defenders to push out of their spawn rune. Okay. It's like at the third floor of the of the command center. Pain spires and turret automation have been removed. That was a major help for defense, but it's gone now. Skywall shield no longer EMPs. Mechanics aren't fun to play around for attackers. Well, I was very limited in how I could defend my base. So I'm grateful that it, it was the way it was. And our goal is meant to encourage back and forth gameplay through construction bases. There was definitely a lot of that. When people attacked me, it felt much more back and forth. I had to actively defend because if I didn't pay attention, they would find a hole, just make a hole. And then like some of these, some lightnings charged in through my base because they were to destroy a few of my blast walls. Orbital Strike Uplink has been converted into a larger building. I'm a big fan of it. I wasn't sure what to make of it at first, but it ended up being a, a value-added change. Challenging enough to where people could hide in it and disrupt my operations. Big enough to where I'd have to choose carefully where to put it. But it was still... It, it feels like a real base now. I like it. And orbital strikes on construction bases do significantly less damage than previously. Okay. Got it. But but they're far more useful now. Orbital strike uplinks are far more useful. Way more useful than flail and glaives. Because flail and glaive, they have the no deploy that they have to abide by. Orbital strikes don't. You can put it anywhere. So that was way more helpful to me. And because the no deploys have shrunk... I now can put bases up to, I can construct bases up against other bases, like de dev made bases, and be much more useful in a fight, which means that the Fell and Glaive now doesn't really do much for me. Because I'm not outward facing toward the open world, I'm inward facing towards the enemy base. Bunker can no longer, Bunker no longer has such a large footprint. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Now it might actually be useful. And has more accessible roof. I really like the bunker. Pre pre fortification, I love the bunker just because it was a bunker. But now it has a smaller footprint, and now it's more useful to where I can put its places. Anti vehicle melee weapons <gasps> no longer damage construction objects. Ah, sad face. I liked using my um, whatever that knife was that this damaged it. That was cool. Elysium spawn tubes and other construction based spawns now show the owner. Cool. Update the visuals on construction building 
uh, FX. That is, that was a, I noticed that big time on my first impression. It was cool. I liked the aesthetics. I liked the, the FX of like that right there. That's just cool to me. It looks good. Good ad. Added ambient audio to construction objects as they build. I had mine down, so I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Many construction objects receive updated visuals. Yep. Definitely saw that. Updated full-time equivalents. I guess that's what FTE means. And codex entries. Okay. Triggering a recon array's alarm module. Functionally now has more visual messaging. Uh, that didn't look like it to me. It looked like a decrease in messaging. We're still working on converting flail glaive and orbital strike into target lasers. Okay, so you want to laze it. This is almost complete and is mainly down to polish. Sure. Right now, it's still a dart. If you owned a previous construction module that was replaced in the update, you'll receive a new version of that module if an equivalent exists or receive a cert refund and even that it doesn't. So the modules, I think, is what they were talking about. And that's it. Next goes into Osher, which I don't need to get into. Deployed Sunders, Ants, and Galaxies equipped with the low star module no longer have despawn timers. Okay, cool. So that was the construction portion. Cool. Very cool. I'm a big fan of it. Two thumbs up. I think it it makes it more challenging for me. With all the diversity of the extra modules, I can now build a proper base. Whereas before it was, I was kind of shoehorned into very specific designs meant to keep attackers out. Now I feel like I am encouraged to fight, to build a base closer to the front line. And, and in this case I did, I built it in the enemy territory. It just was limited. Um, because there was a, a base that was a little bit further than me that took the brunt of the damage. Probably I would have taken the brunt of that damage had that had that base not been there. It was even further into enemy territory. I liked I like this. I think this is a, a net positive for construction players. What was the stuff that I said that I would recommend changing? Two step confirmation for certification unlocks. One step click for cordium. Left, right arrows for helping a, a base turn green. Because most of the time, it's not the up and down that kills you. It's the left and right. Revert rotation speed back to fast. So I can go round and round and round. Because I still need to quickly ascertain where a green is. I can't do that when it's super slow. It takes too long. Mm, I can't remember. There was a third one. But yeah. I like it, man. Nice job, RBG team. Big, big two thumbs up. So this took me longer to get through than I wanted to, an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and end it, and I will do the the Sirius and Kami video comments another day. But yeah, that was good. And go team go, RPG. Nice job. This was a, even though it's niche and there's a lot of complaints because people generally aren't base builders to the base builders, me in particular, big fan. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and end it and that'll be my night. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>